So we're streaming live on Facebook and LinkedIn. And today we're going to be talking about uh, using code signal for data science interviews. Uh, so if anybody isn't familiar with using code signal for interviews, I'm just going to start sharing my screen and just show some of the basics. And then we can dive in from there to data science specifically. All right, let me just share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I do. OK, awesome. So if you've never heard of CodeSignal uh, interview, I'll be shocked since you know you follow CodeSignal, you follow me. So that should be somewhat familiar. But if for some reason it's not, uh, it's collaborative coding environment for conducting technical interviews. So right now, what you're seeing on your screen is Ruben is joined as a candidate. I'm the interviewer. Both of us show up here. There you go. We can type together. Ruben is saying, hello. How do you do comments in Python? I guess. Yes. Hey, Ruben. Do some interviewing together. Both of us can run the code. I can run this. Uh, Ruben can run it on his end, but I'll, I'll choose a question and we can run actual code, not just comments and printing hello. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead, uh, choose a question uh, that we can work on together. Uh, that will start getting us into the realm of collaborative editing and coding and something a little bit more data science related. I think the question was called shoot reject or something like that. Yep. So should reject. Confirm. This will load up a question for us to work on. So this is somewhat data science specific already, where you know you're given some sort of a data set, and you're trying to calculate some sort of a correlation. Looks like your templated code saved Rob from the attempt <laughs> before yeah, we went live. Eight. Yep, exactly. Uh, so you can actually, let's just introduce a bug in it and run the code. You can see this specific question has predefined test cases that give specific inputs and expect a specific output. So this is already a ready-made solution, but maybe you can comment out something and run it just to show what it looks like when it works versus what it doesn't work. Yeah, let's suppose you have made uh bug in your code. For example, let's suppose you did a typo and didn't finish the correction word. Mm -hmm. Let's run this to see what it produces. Just to call yeah. out that it took like three seconds to run this, uh, which takes a lot of optimization on our end to make sure that running this is extremely fast. Yeah, and the good thing is that while looking at the logs, you can actually understand where <laughs> your bug is hidden. So mm -hmm. here, the logs hint me that the bug is somewhere on the line four, and I can quickly look through it and correct that bug. And let's try it one more time. Awesome. Yeah, it works. Works. And you can obviously also run tests one by one. And if it's in an, in an interview, you don't necessarily need to have this test cases. Uh, in an interview, the interviewer can like check on their own if this is actually working, not working. The reason this test cases come in handy uh, in an interview is that if the candidate is coding in a language you're not really familiar with, trying to debug it in your head might be difficult. Whereas here, the automated tests can easily tell you, at least if it's functionally correct or incorrect. And obviously, these types of questions can also be used in an automated test where you just automate the interview. The you know, interviewer doesn't even need to be there, which is a huge time save and probably saves a lot of nerves from the candidate when uh, somebody's not just like watching them do whatever they're doing very intently. Now, this is all cool, but this is, if anybody has used Code Signal before, they know all of this has been there for a very long time. Uh, what's new? Well, if you've missed one of our last lives, that was a month ago, we've introduced this awesome virtual whiteboard that allows more system design style interviews. But what's really cool now is we've also rolled out uh, Jupyter Notebook integration. So if I click open Jupyter here, 
this is going to load in a collaborative Jupyter notebook, which is, if you're into data science, you know exactly what it is and what it does. But if you're not, maybe if Ruben, you can give like a quick two minute yeah, overview of what the hell is Jupyter notebooks. Yeah, let me describe it in several words. So Jupyter notebook has became a standard decoding environment for the data scientists. It's, it's a mix of blocks of code, their outputs, and all that information is displayed inside of your browser. So right now, the interface suggests us to select a kernel to start with. Mm -hmm. uh, let's select pick Python one or are you three. picking one? Yeah, I'll pick one. I'll pick Python 3 here. Yeah, in this case, the kernel is a fancy word for language. Mm -hmm. So now we are working with Python 3, and we can already start writing some code. Right. Let's uh, try let's something. something. There you go. So I guess the real beauty of this is that it's actually collaborative, right? Because like Jupyter Notebooks itself, like, you know, you can use it for writing papers or doing data science research. But if you're trying to use it in an interview, having it be collaborative, just like our coding editor, you can see it shows the cursor and uh, Ruben is working on this line. And yeah, I can add new cells and they should appear on Tigran's screen as well. Want to write and run something just so we can see the collaborative aspect of it? Yeah, let's print something more. And we can make this even more configurable. Let's try to let's try to make some more serious stuff. Let's say let's input the name of the candidate and then print hi uh, and then followed by the name. So one of the cool features is that you can ask for a user input. So if I type some nice. name, yeah. let's say check and hit enter. I didn't actually know that. And I'm like, that's kind of cool. <laughs> you can generate yeah, it. I also learned about <laughs> this. Nice. But I guess the real thing that makes uh, a powerful interview tool for data science candidates is the ability to create you know, visualizations and plot graphs. So let's just quickly show that. Where are my snippets? There they are. So let's just pick an example snippet. There is a pretty cool one here that's 3D. There you go. So here is a snippet that uh, it has built in. Let's say insert example. And then all of a sudden, we have a beautiful plot that's actually showing what this uh, data should be mapping out to, which is, again, pretty cool. And we both can see it on our side, and we can kind of collaborate on this. Yeah, I can, for example, change. Actually, what you see now, it's a graph of some mathematical 3D function. So let's change some parameters and see how the graph behaves. Let's, cool. for example, change the sinus function to cosine. So I have made the change on this line, and I will try to execute it once more. I'm expecting it to like flip the graph. There you go. <laughs> it's something I remember from my math classes. Awesome. That's Child super cool. Three. Yep, yep, yep. Well, great. Uh, I guess the other thing to note here is that you know you can flip back and forth, right? So like if you're doing a data science interview where you need some graphing, some plotting, some regression analysis, you can come to Jupyter. But then you can always close it and go back to what you were doing before. And once the interview is over, this is one of my all-time favorite features is that like let's say we're done here and I want to finish the interview this entire thing is going to be recorded and available as a playback. Not the video. As you can see, there is an integrated audio video calling functionality as well. <clears throat> we don't necessarily record that because that's not the very data-driven part of the interview. Uh, but we record everything else that happens, including the Jupyter Notebook, as well as any whiteboards that you've done. So if I click Finish Interview here, Confirm, going to give me the ability to share some ratings for the candidate. But then most importantly, I have the finished view of the interview where I can click on a specific solution, click playback, and see exactly what Ruben did during the interview. Now, you know most interviewers are not very good at taking notes. So having the ability to go back and rewatch exactly what happened during the interview 
is a really powerful way to bring more data <clears throat> to the hiring process. And as you can see, the Jupyter Notebook that we've worked on together also becomes attached as a PDF, allowing you to easily review the entire interview session, whether it be like the next day for your debrief, or it could be six months later or a year later when you are reconsidering the candidate. Awesome. Well, Ruben, thank you so much. And I guess uh, not to forget to mention that you've almost single-handedly worked on the Jupyter Notebook integration. So amazing work. Looks beautiful. Yeah, that was very interesting and fun for the kingdom. <laughs> awesome. Uh, thanks, everyone, for yeah. watching. And I we hope you enjoyed it and tune in for more lives in the next few months.